If you have an Insonic sampler, an EPS, or a 16 plus, or an ASR10, and if you have any experience with it, you know how difficult programming banks are. Sure, they may be easy to create. Basically, you just go command, instrument, save bank, and that's it. Usually, it saves a bank file that records which instrument is in what slot, what song is loaded, and the bank effect. But you know, and I know, it's not that simple. First, there is no front-end interface. That is, you are trusting the Insonic to save what you think should be saved. That's not always the case, though. When you save a bank, each instrument invisibly holds the drive, label, and path of where it was loaded from. It does not update itself when you save that instrument somewhere else. You have to reload it to update the stored drive, label, and path. And that's not the only thing, but let's skip the complaining and instead look at the solution Chicken Systems has created. There are actually two items that are now implemented. The first is the ability to edit an individual bank file right from disk. Note that we are performing this edit on a virtual drive, that is an image file, but this works on any valid Insonic disk, like a zip disk or an SD card as well. Double click on a bank file in the object list, which is the list on the right side of the interface. The Edit in Sonic Bank dialog appears. The dialog shows what type of bank it is, whether it's an EPS or 16 plus or ASR10. Please note that any bank is loadable upward, but not downward. In other words, an ASR10 bank cannot be seen or loaded into a 16 plus or an EPS, and a 16 plus bank cannot be seen or loaded into an original EPS. You can see the eight instrument slots and the one song slot that a bank defines. It shows the five properties. Enable, device, label, path, and original copy. Enable tells the Insonic whether to pay any attention to that particular slot. Device indicates which device should load into that slot. You can choose floppy, SCSI ID 0 to 7, or flash. Please note that SCSI 3 is the ID for the Insonic, so that should never be selected, and flash only applies to the 16 plus. Label shows what disk label needs to be if the device will be accepted as valid. Please note that this is not EP on original EPS banks as this was not implemented back then. Path is where the file is within the disk that should be loaded, with the delimiter being the dash symbol. The numbers designate the file numbers you see in the Insonic, not the file names. Note, in future versions you will be able to see the file name that is pointed to via this path. All the numbers before the last one are directories, and the last one has to be a file. Original copy designates whether a copy of another slot should be loaded into that slot, or the original should be. There are a couple of other functionary things to help editing quickly. When you click Edit, it saves the bank back to the disk with your edited settings. Please be careful, there is no undo. And for fun, open up the bank again and you'll see the new settings. Now that's just one bank. What if you have a disk or an image and you wanted to update all the bank settings for all the banks on the disk? Here's an example. What if you have Insonic CDR3 and you've made an image of it and you want to slap it on your SCSI to SD equipped SD card, but you are putting it on ID2 and the disk label is disk 002? Sure, you can do this, but the banks won't work anymore because the bank files are pointing to ID4 and the disk label CDR-03. Here's where our second function, Modify Insonic Banks, comes into play. Right-click an Insonic drive or an image on the right. By the way, you can select a directory as well if you want to edit just a subset of banks on the disk. 
the Modify and Sonic Banks dialog appears. It has four sections. If a bank contains, this is an overarching setting, so only the banks contain this text to get the modifications you set below. If it is not, this will be affected. ID number. This globally changes all slots to look for this type of device. You can set the source to be any, or only change it if it's a specific device. Path. You can edit directories to the front of the path, prepend, or add them to the end, append. This is really handy when you take an entire disk and place it within a master directory. Say you have a 2 gigabyte SCSI to SDID and you want to put 3 to 4 CD contacts in it. You would create 4 directories in the root, one for each CD. Then you'd move the files over. Then you'd run modify in Sonic Banks and prepend the pass with the new directory you've placed. Again, remember the purpose is to get the banks properly referenced based on the new location of the files it references. Disk Label Remember that a bank looks for a device first, then the disk label, then the path. If the label isn't correct, it won't even see the files. Modify and Sonic Banks will change all enabled fields to the new disk label if the first field is blank. Once you have done setting your changes, click Modify and the function will sweep over your disk and change what you dictated. Remember all changes are permanent, there is no undo. We have used both these functions to great effect in serving our clients. We hope it will be worthy for you too.